G'day everyone, uh, my name is Nick Bowditch. Today on the Monday Facebook Live broadcast, I would like to talk about what you're worth. It's a real can of worms and I know uh, I've had this discussion and this sort of dilemma with a few people deciding how to charge for their services if they're in consultancy or providing um, advice or whatever or, or doing one-on-one -on -one stuff or even group therapy stuff, um, you know, what they should charge. And there's something in it that's it's really hard for people to sort of get your head around. And the first thing that I think you have to keep in mind, I'll just open that. The first thing that you have to keep in mind, I think, is there's two different things at play here. It's um, what are you worth? And then what are your services worth? Because there's no price in the world that will ever determine what you are worth. You're only ever pricing the content that you're putting together, the advice you're giving, the, the products you're selling, whatever it might be. And so, you know, the old sort of adage about, oh, you want to charge what you're worth, it, it's impossible to determine that because when we're all born, regardless of where you're born or what family you're born into or, or anything like that, you, you, we all have exactly the same amount of inherent worth at that point. Our worth might be diluted or strengthened through our life, depending on our environment and, and uh, people around us and what we do and, and what we don't do and whatever. But at that point, we all have exactly the same inherent worth. So this isn't a, a conversation so much about charging what you're worth or what you are worth as much as what you charge. And that's a very, very different thing. So... There's no price for you. There's only a price for what you create. If you weren't doing something um, and getting paid for it, then does that make you worthless? You know, like that's the real question here is, is isn't, isn't your cost or your value or whatever, it's, it's actually what you're worth. So what I would think you should think about instead of thinking about charging what you're worth or thinking about what you're worth in the professional sense is to think about how much do I cost? How much is an hour of my time worth? How much is a half day worth? What should my day rate be worth? Given what I have to do in my life, who else relies on me for that time, how much I could get paid potentially by somebody else to do it, either in the corporate environment of, of having an employee and being in the workforce or another client. And that's a different conversation. That determines how much you can cost, right? The second thing that I think clouds this whole thing is people who say, well, you can only charge what the market can bear. And... I, don't, I just don't believe that for a moment because the market, certainly the market that I'm operating in and, and there's, you know, the market that all start up and tech and future, future direction and future looking companies and businesses are operating in now, that market doesn't know what it can bear because it's relatively new all the time and changing all the time. If I'm offering services to people to, 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 to have an hour of mentoring with me where we talk about what you're worth and what your value is and Talk about, you know, how you're going to implement kindness more in your life and in your business or whatever. Like, how the fuck are you going to charge for that? The market doesn't know what that's worth. The market probably thinks it's not very worth very much. So that's, that's another consideration. But only charging what the market can bear will always hold you back. Okay? The third thing is, some people get a bit funny about charging because people have never paid that much before for whatever it is. And, you know, I, I get this a lot in the speaking gig stuff. People say to me, oh, I want you to speak at my event. I say, okay. And it's a chamber of commerce thing or something like that. And I'm like, yep, yep, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And then they come back and, and I say, here's my, here's my cost. Yeah, these are my fees. This is the conditions to have me speak at your event. And it's all laid out on my website at nickbowditch.com. Like, you can't miss it. There's no hidden sneakiness. And then people come back and say, oh, will you do it for this or will you do it for that? And I say, no, you know, and, and they say, oh, we've never paid that much before or we've never paid our speakers before. And, and you know, my, my response to that is, well, if you want me to speak at your event, you, you do have to pay me because it costs money. It costs money to take me away from my family. It costs money to take me away from my writing and from doing the stuff that I really love. And I need to be reimbursed for that. And here is how much you need to pay me, pure and simple. And when you're at first, you know, when you're struggling for work or when you, you've got a few fishing lines in the water, it's hard to knock back work. It really is. But the more you do, the more you set yourself up as, this is what I cost. This is the value that I bring you. So that's what it's going to cost. If I charge less, I will get the job. Yep, you will. And this comes back to that kind of group buying 
mentality that drives me fucking crazy. That, you know, if I drop my price, you will buy that. Yes, you will. But how am I ever going to charge you what it's worth or the, the proper price for it in the future? Right? And how am I ever going to get you to refer somebody else to my work and have them pay full price? Then you're never going to do that. The minute you discount your price, you discount your business. You're not discounting your worth or your value, but you are discounting your business. And, and you know, I just, I think it's a mistake and I think it's hard to rebound from. The fifth one is, I don't think I am worth it. That's a big struggle for someone to charge X amount of dollars per hour or a speaking fee of this many thousand dollars or whatever it might be. The little imposter syndrome bullshit in our head says, oh, you're not worth that. They're going to find out. This is the day they find out. You know, that somebody else charges less than you. Somebody else charges more than you. Somebody else is charging exactly the same amount of you. So I must compare myself to that person because I know they are. It's all rubbish. Right? That sort of, that sort of ingrained core belief bullshit in our head is just rubbish. And so, you know, that's, that's always going to hold us back too. So if you don't think you are worth it, you are not. Simple. I am charging too much for them. Is, is the sixth one, then I think that comes up a lot. You know, I, I, I don't want to charge them, they're such nice people, or I don't want to charge them, they've never paid that much for anyone before, or, you know, they're a non-profit, or they're, they're doing this, or they're doing that. That doesn't alter the fact that your price is your price, your cost is your cost, your value is your value, and in the end, your worth is your worth. That shouldn't be determined by somebody else, that should be determined by you. And then the seventh one I, I hear a lot from speakers especially, but also from consultants who are mostly going broke or out of business or having to re-enter the workforce because they can't build their business, is I love it so much. That's why I do it for free. I would do this for free. I, I love them, so I'm going to do it for nothing. You know, I just really want to help people, so I'll do it for nothing. I love what I do so much that I'll do it for nothing. And that just cuts through Whatever value you think you're going to bring is halved, essentially, the minute you say that. Everybody loves what they're doing in that space. That doesn't mean everybody shouldn't charge. If you are, you know, if you are really good at something, or if you really believe in something, or if you are really talented at something, or really qualified, or really love doing something, that's more reason to charge than not charge, I reckon. So, you know, that drives me a little bit crazy when I hear that, you know, I just love it. I do it for the love of it. You know, that's great. Do it for the love of it. But then don't complain when you can't build a business around it. The real problem here is, you know, people say this is my price, but they can't provide enough value to justify that price. That's the real value here. If, if, you, if you overextend value, if you overprovide, if you give a whole lot more value than people were expecting or, or people are expecting, if you're saying, yeah, I'll do this, but I'll also do these things for you and I'll give you some follow-up posts and I'll give you shouts out and I'll do all these things, then if you overexceed their expectation of what you're going to bring, they will always pay it. All right? And if they can't, they can't. They're not, they were never going to be your customer anyway. But if you're providing not only the value that they expect, but exceeding that value, they'll be good. They'll refer you to other people. You'll get good referral work. You'll get good sort of affiliate work. You'll, you'll be, get a good name in the business as being someone who hands out stuff at the start for them, arranges the chairs, puts the coffee urn on, whatever it might be. All those things, all those little 1% of things that add value to the, somebody's experience who's paid for you will convince them that you are worth it. And that you know, no matter how much you charge, you are worth it. It's never about what you are worth. It's always about the value that you bring. Please remember this. In my opinion, none of us, none of, us, none of you, none of me, none of any of us are worth more than somebody else. That is so inherently untrue in my mind that, that I, it can't possibly come into a debate about cost and price and service and whatever. We're all, we all have exactly the same inherent worth. We all have different price tags because we all bring different amounts of value to different sections of the market. But I'm, I'd be really disappointed if you came away from this wondering or doubting what your value 
is, what your worth is, because that can't be that can't be legitimized, that can't be empirically noted. We all have exactly the same value. We all have exactly the same worth as people. We just have different prices because we didn't we bring different value to different products and services. Okay. I hope that helps a little bit to, to start to have this discussion. I'd love to have this discussion about what you are worth or what you feel other people are worth, particularly if you're paying someone or not paying someone because of their price. Um, please let me know in the comments below and click on share also if you think somebody else might be interested in this conversation and this discussion as well. Have a great Monday wherever you are um, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.